great. Nice to see some visitors with us who have traveled some good distance. The Queen is back with us. Glad you're here. Thank you to everyone for being here this morning. In terms of announcements, they've been up on the overheads. They're in your bulletin. Uh, pay attention to Pioneer Club and Bible Study on Wednesday. And um, what other announcements? Anyone? Middle school and high school classes starting next Sunday. Middle school and high school Sunday school classes yeah, Sunday school. starting next Sunday. And Chris will be leading that. Also, in a few weeks, an hour before our board meeting, a state trooper will be here to give a one-hour church safety uh, presentation, and that's open to anyone in the congregation. We will put that in the bulletin uh, over the next couple of weeks. Okay. Prayers. In terms of prayers, we had added Butch Burkhart, the family of Julie Butts, Seth Butler, and Kevin Ashton's mother. Also, Stephen Minter has COVID, Kenny Klein, heart attack, uh, Tim Mayer, heart issues, and James Nicole, kidneys, kidney issues. Any others to add? Yes, Ms. Bishop? That's Julie Butts Rice. Julie Butts Rice. Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I like that prayer for my brother, family, him and the family. His wife passed away last Sunday. Uh, David Meller. That funeral was yesterday, wasn't it?
communion is when we celebrate the remembrance of what Jesus did for us. We all know that he took our place on the cross. I've asked a few here in the congregation what they remember about Jesus. One of them was his compassion and love. He had for Martha and Mary when their brother Lazarus died, John 11. Another is how Jesus was with the children, Matthew 19, 14, Mark 10, 13 through 16, Luke 18, 15 through 17. The disciples tried to stop the parents with the children that were going to Jesus. Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. Another one is when the people that Jesus talked to, Mark 2, 13 through 17, tax collectors and sinners. John 8, 1 through 10, taking up for and talking with the prostitute. Another one is when he was on the cross, taking our place, the place where we should have been, not him. And he still loved us. No matter what, Luke 23, 28. Weep not for me, but weep for yourself and your children. Luke 23, 34. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Then there was when he walked on water, healed the sick, and brought the dead back to life. The one I remember is he prayed. Luke 3, 21 to 22. Matthew 26, 39 to 44. He prayed three times for hours. We can barely get 15 to 30 seconds in. But what, what did he need to pray for? He was not a sinner. He did nothing wrong. Maybe we need to pray sometimes just to pray, not to ask for anything, to give thanks. And maybe just to talk to them, like we talk to one another. Jesus' whole life is a lesson for us to learn from. Let us pray, then we'll take our communion. Father in heaven, we thank you for taking our place on the cross. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us for the sins that we commit. We know, Lord, that you are our forgiving God, and you understand our, the way we are. You are there to support us, Lord. We are waiting for us to give our lives to you, commit our lives the way you want us to live, so we can have eternal life in heaven. Never give up on us, Lord, and we never give up on you. For this, Lord, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see y'all. Um, it's, a, it's a joy. A couple of different things I'm thinking of this morning. One, if you're a guest with us, we're glad you're here with us today. Um, excuse me. Um, God loves you. We 
love you. You're welcome here anytime. The other thing is, is that there's several of you that have been out with different things, and you guys have we've been praying for y'all. And it's so encouraging to see all that. And so uh, praise God for that, because y'all all came back in the sense. So thank you very much. Same so but let's uh, <coughs> let's begin with the word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for who you are. And we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your Son Jesus Christ. Uh, God, we pray that you please would speak to us, God, that we would have open hearts, God, to your word, that we would grow in you and live for you and do what's right. Um, thank you, Lord, for uh, allowing us to be your people and together as your people to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Today we're going to be studying the uh, parable of the three friends at midnight, asking, seeking, and knocking. Okay, the parable of the three friends at midnight. This will be found in Luke chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 13. Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. We're continuing our series in the parables. And uh, technically, this parable begins in verse 5. However, to look at the context of it, we're going to go back to verse 1. So let's go back to verse 1. This is Jesus' teachings on prayer. Luke 11, verse 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John called his disciples. He said to them, this is called the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And he says this. When you pray, say, Father, hallowed, that is, <coughs> praise be to your name. Your name is holy. Praise be your name. Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Now, this is recorded in the uh, Gospel of Luke, but also in the Gospel of Matthew as well. And so, because it's the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, I'm going to combine both of them. Okay? So, uh, go back. Look. Uh, in Luke it says, Father, I will be your name, your kingdom come. Matthew adds this, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. And then Matthew adds this as well, uh, deliver us from evil. For, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Now, with Jesus teaching on the Lord's Prayer, now we have the context of the parable that he's about to go into. Okay, So if you miss that, that's why you always have to go back and look at the verses just before it and the verses just after it to get the context of what's happening here. So Jesus is talking about prayer, the importance of prayer, the Lord's prayer, the, the, the model prayer. Okay, So uh, verse 5, then he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. Because a friend of mine is on a journey, he's come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Now, if you notice over here, there's just a plate and a, and a glass and a little bit of silverware, but there's nothing on it, okay? This represents what's happening in the story here, okay? <clears throat> because this friend of mine is on a journey, he's come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then, then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you. Though he, though he will not get up and give him the bread, because it is his friend, yet yeah, because it's his friend, but because of his boldness, because of his boldness, he will get um, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Okay, because of his boldness. So remember the context of what he's speaking on prayer. Now, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds, and him who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, you give him a scorpion? If you, then you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give his Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, by the way, it's called the three friends at midnight. Why? Because one friend was on a long journey. He goes to visit the... The second friend, okay, the second friend has nothing to give him, okay, so he's hungry, he's tired, and the second friend has nothing to give him, he goes to a third friend to beg for, asking for bread. Now, the case of Jesus just been praying, the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Then he proceeded to teach the model prayer, as it's become known, the Lord's Prayer. He then follows up by giving them this parable, which is an example of what? It's an example of being persistent in prayer. 
Be persistent in prayer. The first and most important lesson in this parable is the importance of the, of the perseverance in prayer. Now, a, a friend is traveling at night. He came to another friend's house at midnight. It was common to travel at night during that, during that time frame, at least the things I've studied. It was much cooler temperatures, okay, in, in the summer months. Uh, Eastern hospitality demanded that food be served, uh, even to strangers. Now, we have an example of this that goes all the way back to Abraham. We're going to look at this. Um, this is the first and greatest example of Eastern hospitality. This is in Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Okay? Three visitors come to visit Abraham. And they're not ordinary visitors. Okay? All right? Now, we'll share some things here. The, the Lord appeared to Abraham near the great tree of Mamre, while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and he saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them. And what does he do? What does Abraham do? He's got three guests that come to meet him. And he, what does he do? He bows down to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought. And then may I wash, then may I wash your feet and render, uh, excuse me, and then rest under the tree. Um, let, let me get you uh, something to eat so that you can be refreshed and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seeds of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and uh, selected a choice tender calf and gave it to a servant who uh, hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds of, and milk and, and the calf that had been prepared and he set it before them. While they ate, he stood near, he stood near them under the tree. Now, I'm going to share this. I believe that God, I believe that this is God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit that came to visit Abraham for many reasons. Now, why do you say, well, why do you say that, future? Well, look at the text closely. Abraham bowed down to the three of them, and they did not stop him from bowing down. He says to the three of them, your servant, referring to himself. When the men stood up to leave, they looked down to Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see then on their way. Then, then, it, then it says the Lord in all caps. Now remember it says in the Lord, you know, it's all caps. It's referring to God the Father, Yahweh. It says, then the Lord, Yahweh, the name of Yahweh, shall, shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Well, who has the power to do that? That's God himself. He says, what, shall, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? The three of them know that Abraham will surely become a great nation. Well, who knows that but God? They say, and then they say, I, speaking as one, even though they are three. They say, I, speaking as one, even though they are three, have chosen him. God says he will bring about all that he has promised Abraham. In verse 22, Abraham remained standing before the Lord, all caps again, meaning Yahweh, the name of God the Father himself. He then begins to plead with God the Father for the city of Sodom. Now, there's some other examples of hospitality, but honestly, that's the best example of hospitality that we can, that we can think of. Now, God the Father, uh, he is, he's God himself, okay? But also, we, the blessings that were given to Abraham, the promise that was made to Abraham, we sing a song that goes like this, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you, so let's just praise the Lord, right? Okay? All right? So, from an earthly perspective, Abraham, we go back to Abraham, spiritually speaking, the promise he's given to Abraham. Here's another great example of Eastern hospitality, or it's not Eastern, of hospitality in general. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Keep on loving each other as brothers. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have entertained angels without knowing. Okay? This friend had probably been traveling from long and from far. The host may at some point, at some point in the past have been a guest of this man, and he had received his uh, great kindness before, and he was coming back to see him again. It would be unthinkable, it'd be unthinkable to have a traveling friend travel all that way and not give him something to eat before he went to bed. But he had no food prepared in his house. It might take the rest of the night 
He gathered enough uh, sticks and weeds to heat outdoor oven of, of, of stone, uh, made of stone to bake some bread. Okay? So, I mean, he didn't have the resources at the time, so he goes to another friend. Jesus calls this host an importunate friend. Now, what does that mean? What does importunity describe? It's shamelessness, persistence, like the unceasing begging of a wino. Okay? They keep begging. Hey, you got a dollar? I want a dollar. Help me with a dollar. You know, just constantly. All right? Or, or when you take a child to Walmart or to a store, right? You go through the toy section and they say, hey, I want a toy. Give me a toy. I need a toy. No, you told me you just got a bunch of toys for your birthday. You're not getting another toy, right? Okay, that's what we told Ellie recently. Okay, so, but that's pretty normal for a kid, right? They ask repeatedly, persistently. <clears throat> Uh, this man opened his door for a friend at midnight, but he was, but he had nothing to set before him. The laws of hospitality would not, would not allow him to put his friend to bed without food. Time was short, and something had to be done. Now, besides pride, would not allow him to put his friend to bed without food. The only other possibility was to seek to borrow some from a neighbor. Now, this shows us how poor most people were in biblical times. Three loaves of bread. You know, we think when we go to Walmart, we think, uh, you know, we, the loaves we have are like, are like this, all right? Three loaves of bread. But if you study, you look at the scriptures, that's not what they had. Okay, three, it was much smaller, like this or even smaller. Three loaves of bread. That they, this would have been, you know, equivalent, to, very close to equivalent to the boys' lunch. But, I mean, this would have been enough just to fill your stomach just a little bit. Okay? They didn't have as much. They, you know, they weren't as blessed as we are from a perspective of, uh, of physical food. The, the loaves were much smaller back in that time frame. So, uh, remember, five loaves of bread were just enough for a growing boy's lunch in John chapter 6, verses 8 through 9. It says, another of Jesus' disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, he, he spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will this go amongst so many? But the host probably saw his neighbor making some bread the night before and assumed that surely there had to be some left over. But getting bread from a friend at midnight would take more than merely just asking him. I mean, think about that, guys. That's a big ask, right? I mean, to think, to go to somebody's place at midnight and be knocking on their door? I mean, think about that. To, I mean, to go and ask them for food at the last, at the last moment when you don't have anything in your house, that would be a huge favor. Okay, especially you know, from the time. But the host probably saw his neighbor uh, baking bread. So the neighbor friend was in bed with his children and wasn't about to get up out of bed. Being the father uh, of a five-year-old, uh, you know, when, when they're little, they, you know, they wake up in the middle of the night, they come and crawl in bed with you, right? That's what happens, right? I mean, in fact, it happened just last night. And usually Ellie's routine used to be between 2.30 and 3 o'clock in the morning, she come crawling in, you know, crawling in, uh, you know, walking in the room, crawling in bed. And so that's normal, you know, that, that would happen, that, that happens a lot. So, um, anyway, they're going to ask for, he's going to ask for bread. Um, this uh, likely meant that they were asleep on pallets, laid on the floor in the same room. Now that would make sense. They have much smaller houses back then, okay? To me, this would be similar to a whole family sleeping in a tent. How many of y'all been camping? Anybody been camping before? All right. When you go camping, now you might have individual tents. Okay, but there's a good chance you have one big, decent-sized family tent. Okay, but even big is, I mean, maybe from here to the wall, and that's that would be a really big tent. Okay, so really, all things considered, it wasn't that large. Okay, of a place. So, <sighs> okay, uh, his first answer was, "No, don't trouble me. The door's now shut. Leave me alone." <laughs> okay, my children are with me. I cannot get up and give you any bread. Now, um, now, this also would make sense if, uh, if, back in that time frame, if they had only one fireplace, okay, and they're trying to keep their house, their small house, it would have made sense if they were all gathered in one spot to stay warm, okay, especially if they were not, okay. His children were probably like ours. Now, this is the case, at least with Ellie. If they wake up not on their own, right, now, she wakes up, she comes in, she crawls into bed, she can go back to sleep, right? But if she, if she comes in, if she wakes up and it's not on her own, Okay, if, if she wakes up some other way, it's very, very difficult to get her to go back to sleep. Okay, that's the case with Ellie, at least. So I'm guessing that's the case with your kids as well. 
Even if his children didn't wake up, he himself would have had trouble getting back to sleep. So his first answer was no, and he hoped that that would be the final answer. He hoped that that would be enough. Most people would have given up, either uh, most people would have given up and gone back home. They would have said, "Okay, all right, he's not going to answer the door. I got somewhere else to go. They have to go to another friend's. You know, maybe some other way to get uh, food for my friend." But he kept knocking. <laughs> if the friend inside had any hope of getting any sleep whatsoever the rest of the night, he had better get up and do something about this because of this man's boldness and because of his persistence. So he rises up to uh, go and get him some bread that he likely would have been saving for himself for breakfast the next morning. Now, why did this man keep knocking at the door at the neighbor's door? This was extremely important to him. It was extremely important to him. Um, of course, he was embarrassed to keep knocking, but he was more embarrassed to return home with nothing. Okay, he was going to keep praying. I mean, the examples. He's going to keep knocking and knocking and knocking on that door. I'm going to ask you this. I ask you some love. When you ask God for something, and you ask Him, and you don't immediately get what you expect from God, do you give up? I hope you don't. I hope you don't. I hope you keep praying. Because sometimes God's answer is yes, some God, sometimes God's answer is no, and sometimes God's answer is wait, right? You keep praying. You keep praying. And so don't give up and uh, keep being persistent in your prayer life. By doing so, show that uh, the, kind of, the kind of neighbor that he had or how little his neighbors had felt about him. Coming home without bread would show that he was, um, that a man would have, he would have been a man who gave up too easily. What would you have done? Put yourself in his shoes. What would you have done? What do you do? How do you pray? How do you pray? With faith? Believing? Guys, I'm going to tell you something. There's one thing. You can say something and just mention it kind of nonchalantly, but that prayer very likely is not going to be answered. Okay? At least more likely it's not going to be answered. Why? Because when we pray, we need to pray in faith, believing that God is able and that God will answer if it's his, if it's his decision to answer. Now, there's a huge difference between just mumbling words and praying in faith. And I hope and pray that when we pray, we don't just mumble words, that we are praying in faith, God, we need your help. God, help us with this situation. We know you can. We know you are able. Please intervene to help us in this situation. Okay? Um, faithful prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you know somebody that's walking closely with God, have them pray for you. I can, I'll just share from the soul here. Back when I was younger, I knew whenever I was going through a major life crisis, I'd ask my mom to pray, that's true. But I would call my grandma and papa. I would, because I knew they feared God. I knew they loved God. And I knew they did the best they could to walk as closely with him as they could and keep sin in their life. <laughs> and when my grandmother and my grandfather prayed for me, I can tell you major things happened. Major things happened. I mean, spiritual mountains were moved when my grandparents prayed for me. Why? Because they saw the Lord. I've got some other illustrations on that. That's for another sermon. But um, God answers prayer. Okay? So, uh, what would you have done? I hope and pray that you would pray in faith. I hope and pray that you would be believing. If our, if our request is not granted right away, what do you think? What do you do? Um, that it's not God's will anyhow? That your request wasn't important enough to him to listen to it? I hope that's not your response. That God doesn't answer your prayers? Do you feel guilty for asking God for, for, for so much so often? Remember, Jesus taught this parable to encourage us, guys, to be persistent and to be bold in prayer. To be persistent and to be bold in prayer. Now, that being said, there are some things that will hinder your prayer life greatly. Let me share some of these things with you. Living in sin. John 9, 31. It says, We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly man who does his will. Now, if it's true, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Okay? But there's a difference of repenting of sin and, and, and living uh, with God by his Holy Spirit versus continuing to continually live in sin. Okay? There's a complete difference there. Are we living by the Holy Spirit or are we living in sin? 
Okay, uh, now, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Is there any area in your life, any area in your heart, that you're hiding evil? I hope you pray not. But if, if you are, you got to repent of it. It's got to go. Because God will not, well, first of all, that's not right, but also there will be a hindrance to you in your prayer life. Um, not being good to your spouse, okay? Let's be honest, okay? Every now and then, you have a disagreement with your spouse. Does that ever happen to you? <laughs> <laughs> all right? Every now and then it happens, right? Every now and then you have a disagreement, okay? All right? You pray about it, you get back on the same page. Now, here's the deal. If we, how we treat our spouse affects our prayer life. If we love God and we love them and we're good to them, that will be a blessing to us and we're more likely to be heard. If we treat them like garbage, that's a, a spiritual wall going up from preventing your prayers from being uh, heard. Uh, husbands, in the same way, be considered as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and heirs with you to the gracious gift of life. So that nothing, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Pride also will hinder your prayers. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Guys, listen, it's not about us. It's not about how, how great we are. We're not great. God's great, okay? We're just thankful to be alive and be allowed to be part of his family and be allowed to serve him. To God be all the glory. But pride, I mentioned this last week, yeah, ego stands for edging God out. If you're so full of yourself, there's no room for God, right? But if you repent of your sins and say, look, God, it's not about me. It's about you. I want to honor you in every aspect of my life. And if we do that, God will bless that. And just forget about yourself and focus on God, and good things will come from that. Humility. God blesses humility. Having an unforgiving spirit, okay? Maybe somebody wronged you. And maybe really truly it was, you know, something major, okay? We have to forgive. That's tough. Especially if it was major. Sometimes we want to hang on to that and dwell on that and dwell on it. But we got to forgive. Because if we don't forgive, our, we ourselves will not be forgiven. But also, if we have an unforgiving spirit, it will hinder our prayers. Um... But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Iniquity and sin in the heart. If we are treasuring sin instead of God and God's word and what is right and what is holy, that will hinder our prayers. The Lord will not listen. Others include turning away from hearing God's law. Proverbs 28, 9. If anyone turns a deaf ear to the law. Now, what is the law? It's not, you know, speed limit. It's not the other thing. It's referring to God's law, okay? If anyone turns a deaf ear to the law, even if it's not man's law, it's God's law. If you turn a deaf ear to God's law, okay, even your prayers will be detestable. Now, we do need to follow man's law as long as it lines up with God and God's word, okay? Clear, clear that up. <laughs> now, <laughs> neglecting the poor, neglecting the poor, if we see someone in need, and we like, you know, I'm not going to help you. You've got to be careful with this in today's day and time, because honestly, um, there are some swindlers out there, right? And a good way to test them is this. If they truly need help, and by the way, ladies, be very careful. I say that with the greatest of respect. Be very, very, very careful. If it's you and your family, okay, and somebody sees somebody on the side of the road, be wise, be careful, okay? Um, but a good way to test them is this. Ask them if you can buy them some food. Ask them if you can get them something to drink. Ask them. If they're truly hungry and they're truly thirsty, and that's truly what it's about, they'll say, yeah, I need help. Right? And otherwise, I forgot to notice it. If they're, if they're not really serious, they're not, it's got to be cash. <laughs> right? I mean, if they have that kind of mindset, then it's, you know, okay, help, help those that you can, but that is one way to test what they're really, what they're really about. If our, if our prayers aren't being answered, we ought to examine ourselves. Now, since persistence and perseverance work so well between man and man, how much more will boldness and persistence help us to obtain the mercies of God when used in prayer according to this parable? It's clear. But the practice of prayer is much easier uh, to begin and to maintain. You know, we talked about it this morning. It's hard to stay on the mountaintop. It, it's hard to stay on that mountaintop. 
You know, you go to Christian camp, you're on a mountaintop. Go to Christian convention, mountaintop. You know, powerful worship service, you know, those kind of things. You mountaintop, right? Mountaintop experiences. And it's, it's different when you're with the whole body of Christ. There's just something amazing about being, being together as the whole body of Christ. There's something extremely special about that. But a big key that will help you to be close to the mountaintop, if not right on top of the mountaintop, is to take that time every day and spend time with God in prayer and His Word. Okay? Spend that time with God in prayer and in His Word. It will help you keep you spiritually on track and you'll have a strength and a power that's beyond yourself. Now again, it won't be quite the same as worshiping together as a whole group of believers. They're, they're, God inhabits the praise of His people. So there is the fellowship of the believers. There's something very special about that. But, but spend time with God in prayer and God's Word and you'll be, it'll help you stay much closer. So, um, watch and pray, it says. Okay? Um, this parable is not the only scripture that teaches the importance of, of being persistent and persevering, persevering in prayer. It's mentioned in different, many different places. Uh, uh, watch and pray. Men ought to always pray and not faint. Pray without ceasing. Prayer was made to, without ceasing for Peter in prison. Remember, they were praying. But Peter's in prison. They're thinking, man, he's going to probably die. James is already dead. The church is there. They're praying, they're praying, they're praying. What happens? God sends an angel to break Peter out of prison, right? Okay, and he goes and uh, talked about that a lesson a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> Would a good father give his son a stone if he asked for bread? A serpent if he asked for a fish? A scorpion if he asked for an egg? The answer is no. And it's as though you are evil, referring to all of us, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask? That's Luke 11, uh, 13. Ask this in love. But can you call Yahweh God your father? John 3.3 uh, 3 says this. We must be born again both of the water and of the spirit. Okay? Remember, that's where our sins are washed away and where we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Before I go to, uh, more into that just for a minute, um, I want to encourage you to keep praying and to continue to be persistent in prayer. Because if you're following <laughs> what's truly happening both in the country and in the world, there are some major things starting to happen. Big, big, big things beginning to happen. I'm not referring, I'll be careful, but I'm talking about will affect every area of life. I'll say it that way. Okay? There's some major things. Could it be, I hope it's the case, could it be that perhaps we've listened to 2 Chronicles 7:14? Could it be that perhaps we now have humbled ourselves? And we've turned from our wicked ways. And we've been in prayer. And we've been persistent in prayer for a while. I hope that's the case. But I, I'm beginning to see some major stuff happening. Keep praying. Because it's a spiritual battle every single day. Okay? But I, I believe. I believe. And I could be wrong. But I believe that the hand of God is beginning to move in a powerful way. Not just here in America. But across the world. And I believe in the next six months to a year. We're going to see some amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Okay? Now, uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Uh, it says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Why? For the forgiveness of your sins, and you receive uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Acts 5, 32. Notice, God gives His Holy Spirit to those who obey. Not just those who come to service on Sunday morning and sing a song. Ooh. Right? Not just those that are just kind to one person. Okay? Right? Okay, now those things are good, okay? But God gives His Holy Spirit to those who believe. Go to say, just believe, okay? God gives His Holy Spirit to those who obey. And according to the scriptures, they're baptized, have their sins washed away, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, we are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given us to those who obey Him. This morning, and I ask this in love. If you've not been baptized into Christ, there's no better time than today. There's no better time than today to make God, Yahweh, Father, God in heaven, the Father of your life, and the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior of your life personally. To have your sins washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. To be born again, as John 3 refers to. Born both of the water and of the Spirit. <clears throat> I want to encourage you. Learn, model prayer, okay? But learn to be persistent and to be bold in your prayer life. And don't give up. 
Don't give up. And do that every day. Spend time in prayer in God's Word and be and, and, and uh, be bold in your prayers and what you ask for God. If you are an immersed believer in God, <coughs> God calls you to continue to obey Him, to walk with Him, and to continue to walk in the light of His holiness, of truth, of righteousness, and love. God loves you. We love you. Keep praying. Be bold. <coughs> God will bless us. And I believe if we walk closely with the Lord, He will answer our prayers. This morning, if you have a decision to make, for the Lord Jesus Christ, please come forward and we sing our invitation song. So, most of you all should know this. We're not going to have words up here. We're just going to sing the chorus of Awesome God and we're going to sing it twice. God loves you. We love you. There is a purity and joy and uh, just, I mean, honestly, the last three or four weeks, y'all have really been singing out in the worship time. I'm thankful for that. that praise God. Praise God. Keep doing that. It's just, I can, there's a difference. <laughs> there's a difference. Okay? So praise God for that. Mr. Mark, will you uh, have a closing prayer for us, please? Sure. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord, to just glorify your name, to worship you through our song, through our prayer, through our meeting around the table, Lord. Just as a corporate body, it's just so good to know that we love you because you first loved us. Lord, help us to recognize just the importance of starting every day on our knees in prayer, Lord, to you, that we might be persistent in that prayer uh, throughout our day, throughout our week, throughout our year, Lord, that we reach out to you for our needs and knowing that you even intercede for us. Thank you, Father, for these people here. Again, we love you, but we thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. It's in his name I pray. Amen. Amen. God loves you. We love you. Have a great week, y'all. God bless you. <laughs>